All right, guys, I got a sequel idea for Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants and Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. But this time it's all dudes and it's called Brotherhood of the Traveling Fleshlight. <laughs> <laughs> and the tagline for it is just make sure you wash it. Oh. <laughs> oh. That sounds like a health hazard. During COVID? No. I don't know. Totally fine. No, they make they make spray chemical cleaner things for that. I feel yeah. like it's not fine, it, but it, but I don't know. I think it's fine. It, I think it's okay. Me and Hunter share one. <laughs> that that's not okay. I got it once. It was filled with potato salad. It was oh. strange. He said he took it on a picnic, but I don't know what that means. It was I, okay. Honestly, my blood sugar dropped really low, and I couldn't find a bowl, and I needed to eat something that I know, night. I just so. imagine someone squeezing potato salad out of a flashlight. Well, luckily, I did. I hadn't done the dishes in three days, and there were no spoons, just, forks, or knives either. It's just it's just volcanoing out. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that and record it on film and then share it with everybody. Are you saying you have a flashlight? No, I'm going to have to go buy one. Oh. But then I'm going to go buy it, go to Kroger's and buy. You're going to buy a flashlight at Kroger? <laughs> yeah. They really have expanded their line. <laughs> yeah. Have you not been to the market? No, they Shit. sell little flashlights, not big ones. Are you talking about the produce? You said they've expanded the line. Oh. Expansion is a big. Anyway, guys, welcome to the Beacon House podcast again for this week. Uh, we're not sure exactly what's happening anymore, but yeah, I'm thanks so for joining lost. us. I don't know what's happening. Supposedly, it's a good season for potato salad, and if you go to Kroger, you can find a lot of interesting things. So, guys, Casey, went, talk to I, me, buddy. What's up? I went to Atlanta two weeks ago for a week. I guess it was not last week, the week before that. I was you in have been coming week. in with Little a vacation? lot of, a lot of stories lately. Like you've, oh, you've got a lot to, t- to tell the audience. He, he a lot has happened. Lot. I know. Yeah. A lot has happened, but I went to Atlanta to go stay at the Claremont, which is a sister property of my, my work. Yes. And, um, it was interesting. I like Atlanta. I like Atlanta a lot. There's a lot of good adventures in Atlanta, man. And I haven't seen all the seasons, but sorry also fantastic show and don't get me on that because i'll talk about that for 12 hours oh sorry i wanted to talk to you guys about because i found it interesting when i went to atlanta a lot of people said that georgia was like a hot spot for covid and like people weren't taking the precautions Mm -hmm. atlanta at least in the city yeah they do not joke about that yeah like that is every building you go to put on a mask you can only take it off at the table yeah if you leave the table, put the mask back on. And yep. if like a wait staff sees you, they'll be like, Hey, put a mask on. They all have boxes of masks at like at their stand. So if you come in, you don't have one, they'll pull one out and give it to you. Um, we went to this place called victory, which makes tiny sandwiches. And it was a delightful place. And they turned their parking lot into their dining room. Like they put a bunch of big tents up and then set everybody out in the, the parking lot and then turn the inside into like just a place for the wait staff. It was interesting. They are taking that shit seriously. So would you say if anybody's <laughs> potentially uh, looking at do, taking a trip to Atlanta, go for it. Go it's going to be it. safe. They're handling yeah. it well. Everybody's handling it real well. The hotel we were staying at, if I left my room, I had to be wearing a mask. Right. Like it was like strict. Serious business. Yeah. And if we were gathered in the library and like, cause we had to go down there, I had to do some training for a new uh, operating system. And as we were doing training, we could take the mask off because we're all just sitting there on computers. But if you're walking around the public, take it off or put it on, put a right. mask on. And, and the place that you went to, to, to give everybody kind of a, a, a view into this, the place you went is a very famous yes. Atlanta hotel that has now been refurbished. Hotel Claremont. Hotel Claremont. Or, and it's actually, it's beautiful now. Like and it, it's and very it contains eclectic. a very particular type of Atlanta uh, culture called the Claremont Lounge. It does have a place called the Claremont Lounge where the strippers do not age under 40 years old. And by that, you mean all the strippers are over 40? Yes. Now, are they actually stripping? Is there like nudity or is it just kind of like a... they take their tops off. I don't think they can do... I think Atlanta has strict rules on strip clubs not exposing (laughs) nether regions. Like you can... Well, I know there's some strip clubs in Atlanta where bands famously have hung out where it's, it's full nude and all this crazy. Oh, but well then but I, don't know, I think but. the laws have to do with how much alcohol is served at the place yeah. with how much nudity gets. So if they're serving alcohol, there can't be full nudity. If mm-hmm. they don't serve alcohol, there can be, and you bring in, and I, I don't know how and it works, but all bands famously have just hung out in those places. For, and of for course, there's a very decades. famous dancer there who is Blondie. 
And that's the one Butch Walker talked about in his story. She's the one. I think she's like she's like everybody's grandmother that's been in a band in the last thirty years in Atlanta. Apparently, apparently she's like fifty or in her fifties or sixties. Yeah, and she crushes PBR cans with her tits. And she has this crazy history of Whoa. like taking care of like a lot of the <clears throat> the, the local music scene and stuff. Oh, like when when the building was acquired, the city of Atlanta came out to the new owners, and they were like. This is a staple. You cannot do anything. Like is we'll it, we'll push it through to make it a, so a historic how, landmark. Here's my after. question: If you've got this new super fancy boutique hotel, um, but you've got this weird, well, that's the thing. It's how the, do they? It's how do the they back. mink? So like you have to go down a hill into yeah. the back of the building in the basement, and that's where the lounge is. Okay, so somebody could potentially stay at the new Claremont Lounge. I never even know that it was there. Never even know it. But if they were to go out the back and go around down, there would be this place. You'd see a giant line of people and be like, "Where are they going?" And then that's how you a giant line of people. Oh. Absolutely, six feet, six feet apart. It's a super big deal. I mean, I when it comes that. to the Claremont Lounge, I I didn't see the line wrapping around the building, of course. But I've heard before COVID that like it would wrap around the building. Yeah. Well, like I said, my my hero and and uh, one of my biggest supporters of my cable business, Mr. Butch Walker, uh, music producer. Everybody's heard us talk about Butch, but apparently. Uh, he produced an album for somebody, uh, and I got to use the Google and look it up or check his Instagram story, but they shot the video, and that lady, uh, what's her name again? Blondie. Was in the video, and he says, if you're from ATL, you know about the Claremont Lounge. And, and, but not, it didn't seem like it was in a trashy way. It seemed like no. it was like this, uh, I, I don't know, like it's not. And that's the thing, like even when Anthony Bourdain did a spot on it on like No Reservations <clears> or one of, his, one of his shows, Anthony Bourdain went there and talked to Blondie. I think he had Alton Brown with him. And they just sat there and drank and talked and had a good time. And he was very like, this is a respected establishment. Yeah. Like it's, it's eclectic. It's strange, but it's a staple and it's something that everyone should partake in. Got it. Got it. And, and I, and I totally get that too. And uh, I've never been to the Claremont lounge, but I, I, I've know about it. I've driven past it and I've driven past it before it was refurbished when it was scary. Yeah. You know, and it was like one of these things, but it's it's a legendary place in Atlanta. It's like a lot of places in Atlanta are like uh like Aurora Coffee and Criminal Records. Did you did you go to or you went to Aurora Coffee? I went to Aurora Coffee. Did you happen to get uh, around Aurora Coffee? Did you happen to get around the corner to the Vortex Burger place? I didn't. I saw did it. You see it? I saw it when we were me and uh, AJ were leaving. It's insanity. It. Yeah, the Vortex is insanity. The burgers they serve <laughs> there, like literally, they're like they're like this will kill you, and they're called like the cardiac, the cardiac too. They're just like gigantic. It's the most insane burgers ever. See that when you get to the point of making food where it's like this could kill you. And I'm like, eh, I'm it's all right. Like, just it's like a quadruple bacon cheeseburger crazy thing. They have other good food too, but the, right around the corner from Vortex is Criminal Records, the coolest record store in Atlanta. Okay, and they have tons of comic book stuff, tons of comic books, all kinds of figurines, and then tons and tons and tons and tons of vinyl. Yeah, all kinds of T-shirts, toys. All kinds of cool stuff, but that's criminal records, and they have old pinball machines and stuff. And again, we hung out with Butch Walker there one time. But if you, that's the little Five Points district in Atlanta. Yeah. There's a cool Mexican restaurant across the street too. I love Five Points. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say if you're going to Atlanta, you got to drop by Little Five Points. And also, right now, I don't know if you saw this. Right next to Aurora Coffee is a bizarre kind of a clothing. Also, bizarre a, or bizarre? It's a bizarre store called okay. the Junk Man's Daughter, and it's like a crazy clothing slash. Uh, it's like, it's directly to the left of the store. Literally, if you walk out of Aurora Coffee, turn right, take your next right into the I th- door. I don't know if that was there anymore. It's nuts looking. Crazy clothing, all kinds of weird mannequins, all kinds of weird novelties. They sell lunch boxes that say live organ. It looks like you're transporting an organ. I think I might have been in there. That sounds I, I went sounds to like five points. It's, um, nu- it's it's like Spencer's, but crazy. Yeah. And it's big. <clears throat> yeah. Super, super. And it's not as it's not as corporate and not as cheesy as Spencer's. It's like a lot more. It's interesting. Okay. Um, but that's that's all the magic of Little Five Points. If, if you go there, it's really, well, really, really cool. We also went to Crog Street Market, and that's where I thought it was going to be the craziest with like COVID and stuff because mm-hmm. it's basically a massive warehouse that they have turned into several little restaurants that you just walk and pick up food, and there's like a right. public seating area that you can go eat. It's like a, a fancy food court, so okay. to speak. Everyone was wearing masks. That I even saw a guy cool. wearing like a, a plastic shield over his face so you could still see his mouth when he talked, but it was still covering his entire face. Interesting. There's some interesting <laughs> bars in Atlanta, too. I mean, that's... That well, I sent you a picture of one. I yeah. went to a cocktail cigar lounge called the Red Phone Booth. Amazing. And it was wonderful. I won't tell you how to get in because that's that's on you, but... It's a neat little hidden gym. Speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one called Joystick, which is like they have like uh, 
all kinds of games and stuff like that. And then there's another one. This is my favorite bar in Atlanta, probably called Bar Church. And it's inside of an old church. And it's three stories. It goes up and it's crazy. There's crazy stuff hanging everywhere. There's photo booths everywhere. It's just nuts. But it's called Bar Church. It's actually got a much longer name, like Church of the Living, blah, 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 of the bar of something. Or other, but everybody calls it Bar Church. That's in Atlanta, too. And then, of course, Smith's Old Bar, the legendary place, first place we ever got to hang out with Butch. And just amazing. And so, yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta was great. I recommend it if you're going on a trip. They're keeping it fairly safe down there. That's good to know. See, I've thought about that so many times. We had talked about the, <laughs> the Grove Park Inn, and then right when we were actually going to try to plan a trip up there, all this stuff happened. And uh, since then, our friend Dave has been there on his uh, birthday or anniversary or something like that. He said it was real safe. Everybody's in masks. They're sterilizing the whole thing. So I think it's maybe getting safe to travel again. Well, not like that. No one's talked about it anymore. The well, news has dropped off. The news oh, is gee, they're like, talking about it on campus. Well, I know, but the news, what I'm saying is the media is not pushing it as much, so you're going to see a lot of people just not care about it anymore. Well, true. I will but, say this weekend, all the students came back to campus, and it's insanity. Mm-hmm. It's total insanity. They're everywhere. I mean, it's like, they're, now they're, a lot of the ones I've seen are trying really hard. They're doing a pretty good job. They're, they're masking up. All the people that come into our establishment, you know, like have masks on, and they stay, you know, they, they give a little distance between each other. They're trying. But, and I told one of my supervisors, I go, hey, man, this may not be so bad. Like, I think they're really trying here on camp. The kids seem like they're, they're you see, there's still packs of them coming down the hill or going down the, the Cumberland <clears throat> Avenue, like 20 of them in a pack. But they, most of them are wearing masks, and it looks like there's an effort there. And he goes, yeah, just wait till all the bars open. And I go, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. wrong. I, like, leaving work a couple times this week, I, I was pulling out, and I saw several different bars, <laughs> and they were just like, they were packed in there like sardines. Nobody had a mask on. I mean, they were, it was, again, I'm not going to call anybody out, but it was just, you just can't control massive mobs of people that don't think there's any danger that just want to go out and get drunk. There's something about like a, a 21 year old college student that's just not worried about COVID, but they did have, I think school's been in session for not even a week yet at this, of this recording. They haven't even had one full week. It's a half a week. Mm-hmm. And they've already got like 357 cases of COVID on campus on campus quarantined and most of them were traced to this one giant party that happened in the Fort Sanders area at this one house. Yep. And they were, cause they do tracing anytime the, they, somebody comes down with COVID, the health department has to trace where were you? Who were you with? If that person <coughs> tests positive, then they start building this thing. Um, which some people think is an infringement of their privacy, but I think it's kind of cool that they're tracing it like that. They traced so many of these cases back to this one giant party. And now they're saying that if the students keep doing stuff like that, and spreading it that they could be expelled good for not wow. pra- yeah no so, good yeah and w uh, ate <laughs> ran a story about that's not just me hearsay that's an actual news story so kids if you're out there don't piss away your education None of the, like stay well, in your room and party with people that are safe or something you know <laughs> also people though we we went into west town mall a couple times recently and yep. the mall has signs up saying that masks are required to enter they've still got lanes designating which side of anything you have to be on if you're going one direction or the other blatantly ignored by most people yeah and most people have masks hanging from their ears by their neck or in their hands but not they're on. not wearing them yeah they're just like carrying them around yeah weird and the security won't do anything about it so even though it's posted as a requirement to enter the mall's not enforcing it there are vendors there i saw today vendors like people that work there um, movie theaters open this weekend. Yeah, I'm curious. Oh, I'm I, not. I'm not going to a movie anytime soon. But I saw um, my our, my friend, who's a local producer, Travis Wyrick, uh, who also just did another Christian band that won a Dove Award, by the way. Oh, nice. And that he's got a bunch of. He's a great guy. Um, anyway, Wyrick went. He's a big movie buff, and he's all about going to the theater, the cinema experience, and giving money so it doesn't go away. He's super into that. Yep. And he um, went to the Pinnacle, and apparently the whole thing's been redesigned. Oh, they remodeled the entire lobby. It's like black and silver. They and it's got a slide. slide that comes down and all this crazy shit. There's Wait, a full, who comes there's down a, from the slide? I don't know. If you leave the, the IMAX theater from the top. I could tell you this. If the members of no. Bush if mm-hmm. the members of Bush are up there, they, they don't want to come down. The well, slide. the Goo Goo Dolls are down there just wondering why they won't slide for them. I'm going to go play in traffic. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm, I'm going to follow you. This is fast. But uh, he went and the, supposedly they were like uh, keeping everybody spaced apart. Everybody was in masks and there was even a film crew there interviewing people. Hey, did you feel safe? Are you here to support the movie industry? Like, you know, they're so they're really pushing, making a push to try to now, keep it alive. And I will say they uh, he said it was a positive experience and he didn't feel like he was in danger. Well, good. that's good. good. Well, there's a full bar now. 
And there's also they uh, they made like the concession stands. They remodeled it and they put a new butter machine on the outside that's like supposed to be a little bit healthier because it has glycerine in it. Oh no. <laughs> So that reminds me, he actually, went back to the bush Gavin show. Rossdale <laughs> said he's on the slide for you in a song. So maybe not the band, but the singer will come down. I it's the science of things. I don't know. There's, <sighs> there's, um, I, know, I, heard, I heard they redid the, the landscaping out front, and they have all these stone walkways and stuff. Now there's 16 stones. 16 stones? In nice. The, in the front now. Did that's you know weird. that they actually have to... That, that's the thing. When they do that now, there's this new device called a razor blade suitcase that they use to just mow down everything and at the same time it kicks up the uh the Casey hold the door so, the dirt. No. Get, call the traffic hold on a second <laughs> I'm not this here. is this is so weird because I know Can't in the back of the pinnacle they also put a runway for a new um a it, new airline called Temple Pilot oh my wow yeah and then the, for the 16 stones they added a few more and it you know they just wanted to like really get together for stone temple pilot there was one other thing too i heard and i, I, I can't remember what it is i'm, gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to travel on the sea of memories this, but if it comes to i'll i think it was something you guys about seen like that new, human clay have you guys seen that rocky or, sequel called creed I, I, please, whoever's listening to this, stop. Hey, all I know is Gwen Stefani showed up and she looked at the new Pinnacle stuff and she was like, no doubt. Yeah, dude, she let Blake Shelton in with Why arms wide open. Why? Arms wide open. I, I can't. Please I heard, stop. I heard Whoever three listening. guys. I heard, I heard three guys showed up with some vitamin R in a in a Chevy Chevelle. <laughs> please just stop listening. Whoever's listening, it's all just a bunch of ducky. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh. So anyways, <laughs> Batman, Batman, Matt Reeves and uh, the Batman yeah. trailer was released yesterday and Hunter came himself like he watched it. So I'm hey, not gonna lie. I did too. Yeah, look, now look, we, I also you, the, the guy that knows the least about Batman. I'm excited for the Robert Pattinson, Pattinson, Batman, Pattinson, because I like Pattinson. Oh, they already given it a name. Oh, yeah. We okay. got Batfleck and Pattinson, Batfleck and Pattinson. So but you're saying that they're also going to resurrect Ben Affleck and Michael. No, they Keaton. already have. And that's in the Flash movie. Can you yeah. can you give a beginner's tutorial of the new Batman stuff coming forward that they can expect? You, you, want, you want this? You me? haven't talked a lot this episode. I'll let you talk about the Flashpoint paradox because that's also I like your okay, shirt. Sure. I meant oh, to tell thank you that you. earlier. Thank you. Um, I'd like Godzilla to, 2000. I'd I met like, him. He's like four feet tall. No joke. I'm going to choke you. Just <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It's my Twitter profile picture. Um, anyways. Okay, so DC has a multiverse. You're a Marvel Comics fan. They also have a multiverse. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of just good things. I'm not I, sure. There's Marvel but, stuff I don't like. Why idea, do you like Marvel? Hey. I've been, hey, you I've got been playing the, got the, the iOS game Marvel Contest of Champions, and it's incredible. <laughs> they're, they're, they're characters I didn't know there, that existed. Like Couldn't the, you have tracked guitars where Randy what, would appreciate more instead character? of playing that? Nobody Stop can it. track guitars what? where Randy appreciates. <laughs> what character are you talking about? Like, there's so many different versions of Deadpool and Venom. I didn't know. Like, there's a... Oh, you mean like Toxic and Carnage and... Well, I knew about Carnage and all that stuff, but there's like a... There, at least in the Marvel Champions game, and I don't know if they just threw him in there to, to be funny, but there's like a uh, a Venom crossover with... Uh, there's, there's Venom Pool, for one, which mm-hmm. is Deadpool with Venom on him. And he's big and crazy. He looks like Venom. Oh, that's happening right now. That happened last year. See, I don't know. I never, like again, I don't know. And that's then there's, right a, now. there's a Howard the Duck version of Venom. <laughs> that, that's just for the game. Called Venom the Duck. And it <laughs> looks insanity. So what I was talking about is Venom is, a, is part of a family of symbiotes. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. And there's Venom. Carnage. There's Carnage. There's Toxic. So anti-Venom. There's, Carnage yeah. is in this game, but, but there's so many Venom spinoffs. And collect, there's one where he's like an agent. It's like Agent Venom. And he's got like a back. He's like the, him and the Punisher or something have crossed over. Yeah, and it's crazy. And there's also a bunch of Deadpool crossovers. There's Gold Pool where he's all gold. There's just all this. There's, there's Gwen Pool. There's Gwen Pool is another one. She's like a, she's got a teddy bear, and when yeah. you hit it, it goes. Eh, eh. It's so nuts. And then there's yeah Venom Pool, and then there's all these crossovers like uh, Spider Gwen mm-hmm. from the alternate reality, and yeah. she's badass. And so did you see Spider Verse? Yes, yes. Miles is in it. That's too. exactly what the Flash is doing. Got it. Um, if you, I know you hate the movie, but if you remember in BVS when the Flash shows up and he's like, "You gotta," it's her. She's the key, and for like thirty seconds, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's all that. He was like, "I'm that's too him. early." Yeah, <clears throat> that's him outside of space and time because he goes so fast on the Speed Force that he literally time warps around him. Okay, okay. And the concept here is because DC film has been so divisive amongst fans. In you recent can say years. garbage. It's okay. Well, you know, Suicide Squad wasn't David Ayer's fault, though. Um, 
But because of that, they're like, you guys like these aspects of it, but you hate this. So what we can do is we can wipe the slate clean and start over with new movies. But for those of you that like it, if there's enough interest there, we can revisit them on HBO Max later in like a short miniseries format and just say either this happened before or it's in an alternate reality. And they're using the movie to introduce that via Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck. Interesting. And Michelle Pfeiffer is coming back as Catwoman. Interesting. Potentially. Yeah, but she's going to be one of those like hairless cats that's just really wrinkly and old and gross looking. <laughs> it kind of scares you. Her name is Sphinx now. Her, her face is just really peeled back and she's like, hello, Batman. And he's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Dang. I wonder if they'll be, if they're going to have Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Keaton back in part of it, I wonder if there'll be any kind of like a Prince tribute. Because be. he was such a huge part of that first Batman movie. Like, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, almost bigger than the than the characters was his 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 video saga and the soundtrack. So Michael Keaton's well, gonna be like one of the main characters. Ben Affleck is gonna have a few minutes of screen time. Like his part's gonna be small, apparently. Well, I also heard that like there's gonna be a scene where it's raining and this yellow like this uh, purple neon light is hitting the rain really well, mm-hmm. and so it's purple rain raining down on them. Yeah, this is just gonna keep. I shouldn't have done that. No, no, I no. Hey, what, you shouldn't have done what? <laughs> I shouldn't have made that joke and about the kid, slime. And then some kid walks by with a raspberry beret. Yeah, <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead inside. So speaking of HBO Max, I heard she got it at a secondhand store. He's just going to keep <laughs> this is it. What about are you talking about Lovecraft Country? Please stop listening. Anyone who's listening, just click away. Is, go, it, is it closing time <clears throat> for the podcast? Go, oh. Hunter, I want to spoil something about Lovecraft Country. Oh, have you not seen it'll it make yet? You no, watch it. It's okay. It'll make you watch I'm, it. Well, I'm getting it today, so it's fine. We, we might not want to get into it. All, all, I, all I'm going to talk about is the last, the forest scene where the could monster we, comes could, out. Could, could we talk? It's where yeah. we're not really giving anything away. Yeah, okay. Describe the monster then. Describe the scene, but don't give me story context. There's a monster where, like, they're in the woods for a reason, and Mm -hmm. it's a bad reason. Um, And all of a sudden, you hear, like, this, like, weird bird call. Yes. And things start moving around in the woods, and this massive, what I can only describe as looking as a bugbear, like the little parasites. Yeah. Oh, that's like big, naked, skinny, like, and they have big mouths, start just ripping people apart. That's a really good description of and, the monster. Yes. And one, Is it a water, and, bear? water bear. Water bear. Water bear. Yeah, bug, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, yeah. don't yes. sue us, Watsy. Um, and one of the guys gets bit, mm-hmm. and they, like, escape, and they get into this <clears throat> house, and they're, like, hunkered down. And all of a sudden, the guy, like, he's talking, but he starts, like, his voice starts to change. Yeah. And one of the guys goes, they don't like light. They're like vampires. They don't like light. And another guy goes, what happens when you get bit by a vampire? And at that point, the dude starts turning into one of them. Wow. And it's, it's insane because the whole it's first pretty, part of the episode, graphic. the whole first like 40 minutes of the episode is just kind of like story building. That's what I wanted to say. I kind of, the only, it was spectacular. But the visual. It's spectacular, but I had a little trouble with the pacing. Like it waits really, 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 really long for something to happen. How which the, I generally I know, there's a lot of stuff that happens. Like the car chase scene was intense. That's oh, where the the guys behind them and they're trying to just, but they can't speed because yeah. they're trying not to get arrested. Well, no, even before that, where they go in the town, the wrong town because they're they're oh, yeah. black and the town people. So there's a, there's a lot of like the Jim Crow law stuff, like where you know the the main characters are black, and so it's it's way back, and yeah. there's a lot of racism. It's so fifties. Like yeah, ish in 50s, 60s kind of, and they can't like really go on their adventure, mm-hmm. uh, which is a supernatural thing, obviously. Because they're also having all this trouble every town they get to, <laughs> like, sure, people are trying to kill them or run them out of town, or like it, it. So there's an intensity there too. So there's like a kind of a social awareness thing, and it's really good, but it doesn't feel like a horror movie. It just feels kind of like you're watching like a social movie, uh, you know, like a drama or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then at the very end, all this crazy shit happens. But is the intent? So you don't like the pacing at the moment, which well, is fine. But is I it, just feel like they waited too long, and then they got too big. Is of a it hurry. trying to build tension, or is it just the pacing is weird? No, like it's, it's, it's they don't really build any tension. They just kind of do it. I thought that they were just like, oh, something's about to happen, and then you're like, it just takes a turn, kind of like from Dust Till Dawn. Okay, when like all of a sudden it was just like it went from being like a Quentin Tarantino movie to being a Eli Roth vampire movie in like us like on a dime. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. And the, there's a reason for the pacing that they did. Yeah, Probably and to set up the whole thing. That and because that's how Lovecraft wrote. That's also true. Lovecraft wrote it to where it was really dry. And then the last 30 minutes, it picks up so well that you're just like, this is the best book I ever read. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even remember the first 100 pages. I just remember yeah. the last 30. Well, and I have, I'm much more critical of movies that, get, <clears throat> that, that move too fast, that mm-hmm. don't establish a thing. So this takes its damn so good time. So you prefer it if it's crawling in your skin. 
Oh God, we're back here to the '90s movies things. Uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> giving him heartburn. We're giving, uh, I'm, get, we're giving, uh, I'm getting some acid reflux. Uh, something getting, inside you that floats beneath the surface. Um, you poor thing. He's killing me. He's killing me. I smell sex and candy. Uh, <laughs> that's just my high blood sugar, buddy. <laughs> I do. Hey, you do. Hey. You. Oh, hey. <laughs> Uh, oh man anyway it's wonderful you should watch it and it's one of the better things i've seen i can't wait i, I haven't been this excited for some for the next episode apparently it's an anthology though is that the thing you guys are aware of yes. uh, apparently i don't know if that's the episodes are anthology based yeah like not not one and done but like i saw a reviewer that saw the first five episodes and How? she said that they tell their stories and then they move on to new groups of people doing stuff so i don't know if it's that as a series it's an anthology or if it's that would actually jumping make sense around because at the end of the first episode they go to like they t- on the coming weeks they open and up. it looks real like choppy and back and forth and strange yeah, there's definitely some there's definitely other thing it's not like you've met all the characters and you, it's yeah. like you barely scratch the surface of the things but, you're I, gonna, but i feel like even if it's an anthology it still circles around the main guy it's still it still resol- revolves around tick We'll find out, yeah. I guess. But it was spectacular, and I don't know if I've been this excited to see the next episode of something since Mandalorian. Yeah, I'm just glad you haven't become so numb that you know you're not affected by storytelling, even if you have problems with it. He's killing me. He's Is killing he? me. What? Anyway, um, it's fantastic. Lovecraft Country. I'd recommend it to anybody. You've got to check it out. It is. It is very, very good. And you should. Are you watching it today? <clears throat> I'm going to watch it today. I'll be. We're I'll be anxiously, HBO. anxiously watching my text. To see what you think of it. I oh, that's think. amazing. He normally ignores us. No. He's a tick. Huh? A tick turd? Tick turd. A tick dick. Um, there's tick a dick. Tick dick. There's that's another show. I'd rather use alcohol than fire. There's a pretty good out. show. This is a much sillier one, but it's super entertaining on Netflix right now called Teenage Bounty Hunters. Have you seen any of that? I thought you were about to say the one that everyone's on Reddit's going ape shit. What's like, Cuties? Yes. It's so fucking gross. What's cuties? Hey, my wife is here, guys. Hey, Libby. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. What is cuties? Uh, I, it's, all, it's, all I know is it, on Reddit, people are like calling Netflix out for being super gross because it looks like incredibly young girls in like outfits they should not be fucking it's wearing. It's 11 to 12 year old girls that are dressed extremely provocatively and then pose provocatively for the poster. The main intent, uh, I guess Libby's going to pull it up to show you. The main intent of the story, though, is it's a film or a TV show or whatever about the kind of... A, obscene nature of the sexualization of young girls so i think on top of that just being gross the big outcry is like it's i'm actually against this and you're doing it to promote it so it's a serious thing it's just sort of hard to watch no it's it's ser- well yeah that's i the think it's, intent, it's supposed but, to be satire but the way that it's presented at the moment by netflix seems like they're just like look at these hot babes except and well, like, there's a pretty funny one called you know, Teenage Bounty Hunters, not, which does not 10. sound like a show I would watch. Yeah, but it came to me from reliable recommendation, uh, and a friend of mine. She said you, you've got to watch it, and I go, that sounds really stupid. I don't. That sounds like another <laughs> Twilight or something. She goes, no, 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 no. Just watch mm-hmm. it. So I picked up the first episode, and it's got an old actor from a famous TV show in the '80s called Different Robert World. Mitchum. No, uh, Kadeem Hardison, and um, yeah. Kadeem Hardison is yeah. in it, who played Dwayne Wade on the show that came on right after the Cosby show, had okay. Lisa Bonet in it, and he had the flip-up glasses. He was like an <laughs> 80s icon. Well, he's like old and grizzled now, and he's like real salty, and he winds up getting in a bounty hunter business with these two high school girls that somehow are really good at bounty hunting people, and they're good with guns because it's set in Georgia, and so there's this super like, everybody's like super religious in it, but it's funny you know, and anytime somebody says like, yeah, you're going to just wind up going to the University of Georgia and everybody goes, go dogs. Like it, there's a lot of funny <laughs> shit in it. And it and on the surface, it does not look like it'd be good. And it's fucking hilarious. Uh, the writing in it is spectacular. The performances and there's the girls in it. The two girls are awesome. Kadeem Hardison in it is awesome. And this cast is fantastic, but it's called Teenage Bounty Hunters. It's on Netflix. You've probably already got it. It's worth a shot. And uh, it's it's really and it actually gets as it unfolds it actually gets very, the mystery turns out real good and it gets kind of serious and it's got some dramatic moments and it deals with like, but it takes its time getting there. Yes. Okay. It takes its time. I'll kill you. I'm going <laughs> to kick you in the glasses. Now, have you guys seen the trailer? Time I after sent time, you? Dude. Have you guys seen the trailer that I sent you? That's the new movie with, uh, Robert Pattinson, Tom Holland, Stan, uh, Sebastian Stan, Bill Skarsgård. 
in it called The Devil All the Time. Uh, yes. I it looked fantastic. So good. When, when's that oh, come no, out? I haven't seen it. It comes out September 16th. So it comes out this year? And it comes out directly to Netflix, I believe. Oh my God. I, I saw the trailer already and I'm like... Blah, 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 blah. Sinister characters converge around a young man devoted to protecting those he loves in post-war backwoods town teeming with corruption and brutality and it like, sounds like lawless and tom holland's character is like like a super kind of like redneck type guy with a country accent and he sounds great and at robert, least from the trailer and robert pattinson plays like a snake in the grass preacher that came to town and it's like stealing people's money dude it looks awesome oh it looks awesome it really looks like a movie that's going to take these characters that have been kind of you know one of them's one of them's mired in and, spider-man one of them's mired in twilight yeah and it's going to actually Batman. it's going to give them like this is going to be one of those movies that blows everybody's stick in the dirt, I think. And it's going to be one of those that people watch and go, oh, all these characters that were typecasted can definitely do other stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, going to show their good. range. Like, like Sebastian Sam plays like a sheriff. Bill Skarsgård <clears throat> plays Tom Holland's dad, but it's like in the past when he shows up in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like they all have this thick country accent and it's it looks brutal. I'm yeah, actually dude. excited for that. It I'm, looks dark. I hate Tom Holland's Spider-Man the way that it's performed, but I don't hate Tom Holland as an actor. So That's I'm insane, interested. I think Tom like, Holland Spider-Man is the best Spider-Man we've had. It is the best Spider-Man we've had, but he's, he's a it's little, it's the most accurate. I don't know if that he's means a little it's the bit, best. I, I, he's a, I don't know. He seems a little young. I don't know. He's I don't nervous. Know. I don't know. He, yeah. But that's, but that's how Spider-Man is when he first, becomes like part of the Avengers so. and yeah, stuff like that. Like you're he's not very, wrong, but he's constantly doing stuff and questioning himself. Yeah. But there's something about the way that he does it that I, again, I, I don't know. Cause I like his acting in the movies, mm-hmm. but because it's Spider-Man, it bothers me that he's like that. So I don't know. And I've never seen, I haven't seen far from home yet either. So I, I hate to say I haven't either. And I've been playing this game. So Mephi- like, uh, 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 Mysterio is in it. Mephistopheles is the only part of Far From Home that's worth watching. There's all this stuff, and I'm like, I, I, well, I feel bad that I know. And in, in the stealth suit, he's in the yeah. stealth suit in the game, and it's the best version of Spider-Man in the game. And I'm like, I, I didn't even watch that movie. Well, apparently Far From Home ends with Mysterio selling out Peter Parker and making him a, a villain. And, and J. Jonah the next, And the next movie comes out. It's called Spider-Man Homesick. And we don't really know anything about it other than it's called Homesick. So you have Homecoming, Far From Home, Homesick. I got, and they're clearly trying to get a whole new young uh, fan base, yeah. which is which uh, which they should because that's what's going to sustain them. But like, yeah, it, but they it, could they could write a better Spider Man though. The, I, mo- I the movies are good. They're, they're I don't mean I don't they're mean okay. that. But they're they're not my favorite. They're not challenging though. Spider Man's challenging. No, I agree. I agree. I, Marvel peaked for me with the first End Game. What is it? Uh, oh, after Infinity I watched War. after War, I watched the peak for me, Infinity War and End Game. Those two movies tied it up for me. I don't think I'll need to watch any more Marvel movies until they come out, like on Netflix or whatever platform they come out. Yeah, on I'm going to be Plus. choosy. I'm going to see Doctor Strange too because of the multiverse and the potential with Sam Raimi, like for the cameo aspect of oh, it, the horror be aspect of it, like yeah. the madness thing. But like oh, in general, I'm done with Marvel. I'll oh, there's a, there's a there's also a Venom Doctor Strange crossover, mm-hmm. uh, and it's not Doctor Venom. It's called something else, like <laughs> Venom Strange. No, yeah. Strange Venom. That sounds like a sex thing. The Chemicals Between Us? My Chemical Romance? Thank you for tuning into Beacon House. <laughs> you don't like our rambling? Man. Don't say I know what you're thinking. No, I don't know any no doubt, actually. I don't know. That's okay. That's You're, you're the inspiration. Uh-huh. You're the angel and beneath my wings. Spencer. Wait, the wind beneath my wings? Angel? Actually, you know what? I was going to say this to you, but... My wife is here, so this makes more sense. Libby. <laughs> so the uninterested. In my life. So uninterested. <laughs> you're the inspiration. Huh. From Beacon House what's to that? the fans, we want to say thank you. Wait a minute, real quick. What's that Eric Clapton song? That's just absolute garbage. How are we supposed to live without you? I don't know. The one about his clumsy toddler. Are you talking about the one he wrote when his son died? Tears in Heaven? Maybe that's it. Oh my God. No, that's a great song. Oh, okay. Man, there's a storm coming and it's filled with fire and rain. <laughs> Is that another song? Yeah. Spencer could just edit that out. I, I have to go. I, I love everyone. I'm sorry you had to listen to this. It's oh, okay. Spencer's wow. got diarrhea wow. now. He's got to go brown the runway. <laughs> What's the Rob Zombie? Go where witches? I don't know. Thunder Six. Thunder Kiss 65. That's one of you. He was probably thinking Dracula. Dracula. Oh, that's it. I, that's when I always thought it was Dracula. It's Dracula, and I don't it's know Dracula. what a Dracula it's about a, is. It's, it's about the a car, car from the Munsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yep. Body of a monkey and feet of a cock. Okay. Feet of a cock? Yeah, like a chicken. Yeah. I'm going to chicken out and stop the podcast. <laughs> <laughs>